Good afternoon. I'm going to show you how to completely fill out a life table. Uh, this how-to is broken up into two different parts. So for the first part, we're going to show you how to create a life table to calculate life expectancy and to create a survivorship curve, uh, or at least to get the data to create a survivorship curve. Our second video will be a continuation where we will complete a life table and calculate both generation time and the net reproductive rate. Our third video then will show you how to construct a survivorship curve and to get a curve that has two different lines on it. So to begin, we have our lab that has information on number of individuals that died here in Texas. And in our data set, we have uh, individuals that died in 1870 in several counties of Texas. The way our data set is broken up is we've recorded how many individuals died in each age. So what we're going to have to do in our lab is to figure out how many individuals total died when they were between 0 and 9 years old and then 10, 10 to 19 and so forth. So adding up these numbers. And what we end up getting is a column that is DX, or the number of individuals that died while they were in that age category. So in our lab, we have age classes, so 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so forth. And the first thing we're going to have to do is to fill out the age. So the age column always starts with 0. This age gives us how many how long that individual lived. So for a zero age, they've lived basically zero years or zero decades or however long our, our days last or our age classes last. In one, these lived a complete age category, whereas these with the zero have not lived a complete age category. So this is a table, the start of a table, taken from table 8.2 in our textbook, Cronies, uh, David Croning's Ecology, Evolution, Application, and Integration book. Uh, this table that was in the textbook came from a paper by Murray in 1944, where they report on number uh, of individuals that died uh, of dull sheep. So we're going to have this DX column, and this is what the column that we'll have in the lab. And the first thing we have to do is try to fill out this NX column, which is the number of individuals that were alive at the start of that age category. Now, how do we get this? Well, we know how many individuals died in each age class. So if we go ahead and add up all of those individuals, this tells us how many individuals actually started in our table. So we had 608 dull sheep that were actually born into this population. So that is our starting class. And then how do we get these next ones? Well, this again, this n sub x is the number of individuals that were alive at the start of that age category. All right, to get how many individuals that were alive at the start of the next age category, we'll take this number and subtract the number of individuals that died. And that is given here in our equation sheet. So for this, I'm going to hit equal sign. We'll take those individuals. That's how many were alive at the start of the previous age category. And we'll subtract the total number that died in that age category and that tells us then that we have 487 individuals that were alive at the start of age one and then I can just drag and drop so we had 480 individuals that were alive at the start of age two 472 that were alive at the start of their age three and so on and so on so that we had two individuals alive at the start of the 13 age category all two died which means zero individuals we're alive at the start of the 14th age category. And now that we have this nx, then we can calculate survivorship. So survivorship is L sub x. We're going to use this column to make our survivorship curve. So with this curve, our calculation is this. We want to know the number of individuals or the proportion of individuals that were alive at the start of the age category. So in this case, this very first one should always be 1. 
or 100% because if you were born into this population, then you were alive at the start of this age class. Now our calculation is going to be that number divided by the same number. And what I'm going to do is use our dollar sign notation here because I want to fix that row. I always want to divide by that, that number. So what we have is 100% that survived. And then if I drag to fill this, it tells me that 80% of our individual survived to the start of age one. And you can see that our formula is this number divided by our starting number. If I drag down again, you'll see the same thing. It's whatever my NX is for that age class divided by our initial age. And you might be wondering, what is all of this x and x minus 1? Well, it just refers to our age. So n sub x or uh, n, n, n sub x for age 2 would be n sub 2 or 480. So now that you know this, I'm just going to drag and fill, and this gives us our survivorships. So you can see that 64% of our individuals survived to live to the seventh age. Qx is the opposite. So Qx is mortality. This is going to give us the percentage of individuals that died during that age class. So Lx was the percentage of individuals that survived to an age. Qx is the percentage of individuals that died in that age. So we're going to divide by a different number. So our equation here, Qx, is the number of individuals that died in that age class divided by the number of individuals that were alive at the start of that age class. So again, writing a formula, I'll do my dx divided by my nx and hit enter. So we had almost 20% of individuals died in that first age. I'm going to drag and fill so we get the rest and you can see that we had 20% or almost 20% died in age 0, but then we had 1.5% in that died in age 1, about 1.5% 1 that died in age 2, 1.5% that died in age 3, and so forth. And then as we age, then you start seeing the mortality rates increase until we get to 93% died, and then these numbers are less reliable because we started with so few individuals. What you'll note is that this number is, is undefined because we had zero, we started with zero, and zero individuals died. So now we have our survivorship mortality. And we could stop there. We can actually stop here if we were only interested in making our survivorship curves. But one of the things that we're interested in is calculating a life expectancy. So for the life expectancy EX, we're going to have to calculate two more columns. So with life expectancy, we're adding up where we're trying to figure out how many years are to be lived by all individuals in our population. And then once we know how many years are, are left to live, then we're going to divide it by the number of individuals that are there. And that kind of gives us the average number of, of years to live per individual, which basically is our life expectancy. So the first thing we're going to have to do is calculate LX. LX is this equation which is basically the average number of individuals that lived during that age category. So our equation is this. It's that number. Let's use our parentheses first. So that number plus that number divided by 2. And that's 547.5. So we had 608 that started, they were alive at the start, and then you had 487 that were alive at the very end because they were alive at the start of the next age category. So we lost 121, and on average then we have 608, uh, or the average of these two numbers, alive during that time period. So while I report it here, while I report the equation right here, I can simplify it and say, well, if we're looking for the average number of individuals that are alive, then let's just take the average of those two numbers. And we get 547.5. And then I can, I can fill the column, and you can see that this is the average number of individuals that are alive at each age category. So that's big L. Now, if we know how many individuals are alive, then what we can do is add up 
these numbers to set to tell us how many individuals were or how many individual years are available to live that is tx so tx is this equation it's the sum but i'm going to note that this sum starts at the age category of interest so for this first one what we're interested in is the sum starting with age zero all the way to the end and it says 4 to 99. That means we have 4,299 ages to live in this population. In this age, we're not going to include this one because those individuals already lived and they died. So now what we want is the sum of from here to here. So it's the sum from here to here. And then we do the same thing here. It would be the sum from this line all the way to the end. Now, I can do that for every single one, or I can change it and say, well, this F19 doesn't change because that's the end of the table. So now, every time I fill, it's only going to change this row, and it gets me to what I actually want, which is the number of years or number of ages that are going to be lived. So in this population, there's 4,299 years or ages to be lived by this population. After we live one year, then there's 3,751 and a half years to live, and then 3,268. Now, this is the total number of years that are going to be lived, and we know how many individuals were alive or lived in that age class. So our life expectancy then is this number divided by the number of individuals that are alive. So this is how many years are lived are left to live by our population. And if there's 608 individuals in our population at this point, then it means each individual is expected to live 7.07 .07 ages. And that is our equation. So I'm going to fill that up. And you can see that if we are born into this population, then our life expectancy is 7.1 ages. If we live to the first age, then we live an estimated 7.7 .7 ages more. And then if we live to age 2, we live on average of 6.8 ages more. So if this is years, to make it easier, what we're saying is if you're born, you expect to live 7 years. But if you live to age 1, you expect to live 7.7 .7 more years so you're living to 8.7. Now, why the discrepancy? Well, it's because you had a high rate of death early on. We lost about 20% of our individuals. So if we're able to survive that initial high mortality time period, then we can live a little bit longer because we've avoided that age that had a higher mortality rate. So this, this very first one, is our life expectancy of our population. So this is how we get life expectancy in survivorship curve. And this is using our example of dull sheep. Uh, in this example, we don't have a, a birth schedule. Why? It's because we looked at mortality rates uh, and we didn't have any information on reproduction. However, this type of table would also apply to all of our male offspring or male individuals because males don't give birth. The only thing we focus on is their survivorship and then life expectancy. So as you work through the lab, don't be surprised when you look at the table and these are the only columns that are present for the males. All right, so this is example number one. Check out the second video for example number two.